Hi there ladies and gents uh, and welcome back um, to another PS4 video we've got for you today. Um, today we're going to be taking another look at the Blue Light of Death um, on a couple of these Playstations. Now, you might be wondering why we've got two here uh, and both are suffering from the Blue Light of Death. Um, now then, these two videos, sorry, these two uh, PS4s are going to be featured in a couple of videos we've got coming up. The one we're going to be taking a look at today is the one on the right, that's this one here. Um, that's the one we're going to be looking at now. Um, the one on the left uh, is one that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, this machine here uh, actually has a, a south bridge issue, so we're going to look at replacing the south bridge uh, on this particular machine. Um, but the one we're going to be looking at today is the one on the right. Now, this one also has a blue light of death. Um, but for a seemingly different reason. So the reason I say it's a seemingly different reason is probably going to become apparently clear in a sec. So the reason why we've got both here today is for demonstration purposes basically to, to let you see the difference between the blue light of death on this machine and the blue light of death on this machine. Now you're probably thinking well there's not a lot of difference surely but there is and you'll see why. So for example right this PS4 turned up yesterday. This is one I bought for eBay. Um, this one I've had for a couple of weeks um, and like I say it's taken me a while to find a Southbridge chip for it but I have managed to find one eventually. So once that comes in we'll get that swapped over. Um, but this one here um, came in just as a blue light of death. Um, cost me about £92 off eBay um, and when I got it yesterday uh, I powered it up and thought, ooh, that's slightly different, and you'll see why in a moment. So, we've got them both plugged in, and I'm going to attempt to power this machine on the left on in a moment, and just wait and see what the blue light does. So, if we power it on now. So you'll notice there, um, you get a blue light for about mm, a second and a half, two seconds, something like that, and then the machine powers down. Now watch what happens when we power the one on the right. See how much quicker that was? And I don't know if you've noticed on the video, but you get a double click. Uh, now, in the case of this one, you see, I can turn that back off. And I can have another go. But the one on the right... ...is completely dead. I can't do anything with that at all. The one on the left. Now, the one on the left is what I would traditionally call your usual stereotypical blue light of death. The one on the right uh, is something slightly different. Now, the one on the right, bearing in mind what we've got there, so it comes on, it goes more or less straight off, and the double click would lead me to believe that that is power supply related. This one here is some other piece of hardware, so it's not power supply. If you get one where you get a light for a couple of seconds, and then it knocks off, yeah, I think you've got more of a main board issue, so either APU mainly, possibly South Bridge, possibly RAM, but more or less normally APU. This side here, you've got an issue with power or power regulation. So, first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to take this thing apart, and we're going to get the power supply out of it, and we're going to have a look and see uh, what we get. So, we'll disassemble it, we'll take the power supply out, and uh, we'll get it on the bench and we'll have a look. So, uh, Bear with me. Right, okay, so this is our power supply in question, out of that um, funny blue light of death machine. And on the outside, uh, as you'll see, um, there isn't an awful lot to see, to be honest. You've got to get this out of the case. So, to get this out of the case, it's really rather simple. Uh, you've got uh, a couple of these felt strips down either side uh, of the power supply there. So you just need a Stanley blade, um, or flathead screwdrivers, or just something just to nip along the seam there, just to separate the two halves. And then you've got a couple of screws, um, one in this hole here, and one in this hole just here. So I, off camera, have removed these screws, um, so you don't have to watch that. And then what all you need to do is, if you get um, hold of it in the middle and pull, you'll start to separate the two halves of the case out. Now, there's a couple of tabs uh, on the inside edge there, 
uh, and one just there. Um, so if you pop those, you should end up with a power supply. Just having to do these. It's quite difficult to uh, to pop off. They are quite um, tough. <laughs> they are quite stubborn. There you go. One good pull and it's out. So don't be shy with it. Um, they can take a bit of uh, a bit of abuse. Uh, and there we are. So that is our power supply board out of our PS4. So what we need to do now is we need to have a look and see if we can spot what was causing that issue. So we ended up where we had a double click. So our PS4 gave us a double click when we tried to power it on and it came on for all of a couple of seconds before knocking itself off. So. Uh, that would lead me to believe that there is some sort of internal failure on this power supply. Now, if we have a look, first thing to do, to be honest, with these things is you could get your multimeter out and you could start running around and measuring loads of different components, but to be honest, the best thing you can do um, to start off with is to use your eyeballs and your brain. And if something looks burnt and looks um, like it's, uh, it's not exactly factory fresh anymore, then chances are that component is indeed faulty. Now, why that component is faulty is something else you've got to find out, and that might be when you crack your multimeter out and start measuring things. But initially, we need a bit of a clue as to where to start, because if we were to sit and measure everything on here, we'd be here quite a while. So, just having a bit of a visual check around on the underside, uh, and you're looking for anything that's sort of burnt, any sort of singe marks, anything that's slightly black around the edges, any traces which look burnt, any components which have holes in or look a bit melted or anything like that. But in this instance, it all looks relatively clean. I can't see anything immediately springing to mind here as to what might be causing our issue. So if we go back top side, and ooh, actually there is one thing that sort of does pique my interest as I sort of look at this power supply and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera but this big transformer here uh, looks like it's sat up off the board interestingly enough so you can see the two windings on the output side of it there. <laughs> ah <laughs> now I think this just goes to prove my point that you could sit here with multimeters and start measuring components but like I say, sometimes the best tool you've got in your inventory are your eyeballs. And if we look here, the two outputs on the side, well, one, it looks a little bit black, and two, the end has completely come away. And if we have a look on the other side, just to sort of see, see what the other side is like, that side is also separated. You can see I can waggle that about in the wind as well. And on the Bottom side, and you won't be able to see this on the camera, I don't think, uh, but it would appear that I can move that transformer. Yeah, I can. I can actually move it up and down. It looks like it's it's actually come away from from the two pins. Uh, there's like two little securing pins on the board there, which this sits over, and this is actually lifted away. So it looks like what's happened is is maybe this has been dropped at some point. Uh, and this transformer's come away from its mounting and actually ripped the wires off as well. So we are going to have a look and see if we can actually salvage this. Um, so we're going to have a look and see if we can repair this uh, this transformer. So uh, first things first, I think we're going to have to see if we can desolder it. Uh, and then we'll have a look and see what we can do. So I'm just going to go and desolder that. Uh, if you join us uh, back at the table, hopefully we'll have it off and um, we can take a closer look at seeing if we can repair that. Right, okay, so I've just done a really quick um, desoldering job uh, of this transformer and let's see if we can get you a, a bit of a, a bit of picture of where we've worked on this. So there's two pins here and here uh, which are soldered in. 
Um, there's a locating pin there, which doesn't have any solder, um, so don't worry about that one. Uh, there's these four um, pins here, which all need desoldering. Now they're quite big, um, so they're going to need a bit of flux and a bit of heat on them. But hopefully, when we lift this away now, so we've given each pin the waggle test, and they're all three. Um, interestingly enough, this pin here, on this side when I desoldered it, actually fell out. So, <laughs> see what we can do with that. Once we lift it away, there we go, so that's good. So if we flip our power supply board the back the right way around. We'll move that out of the way for now. That's quite a beefy transformer, that one. But as you can see there now, that's out of the way. And there isn't an awful lot to see there, to be honest, but this pin as well has come out of that side. So I'll just pop that over there like that. So we've got the transformer here and then we've got the board there and the two pins uh, from either side there and there so let's get rid of this this board for a sec and we'll have a look at this transformer so that's the transformer there as it sits up on the board there's these two wires here and then these two mounting poles here go either side in the bottom of there so it looks like what's happened is at some point that these have actually come loose. So you can actually see there on the bottom of here where it's actually been been arcing across. There's these little burn marks um, where this has come off. And uh, and if you look at the top there, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, but it looks a bit black. Um, <laughs> where it's obviously been arcing across as it's been been in the machine. So we're going to see if we can put these back in. So. Tweezers might not be the best job for this actually, we might need a, a decent pair of pliers or some mole grips or something, which I do have but not to hand, so I might have to go get those. Um, I'll try popping it in with this. Ah yeah, that's got it. And the same again at the other side. Now, this does have a little bit of it, <laughs> wiring insulation stuck to it actually, so I'm just going to try and get that off. It just genuinely doesn't look particularly pleasant, that. <laughs> so I'm just going to try and slide that back in the hole. There we go. So, the three pins now are, are back in place. Um, there you go. So, now what we need to try and do is actually strip these wires back. Uh, properly and see what sort of state they're in. So we're just going to, uh, to strip the end of those. I think what I'm going to do here actually is actually change the uh, try and clear the ends of those up a little bit. put a dab of flux on those and a, a drop of solder just to try and uh, clean those contact points up a little bit don't know how easy this is going to be on camera to be honest with you trying to work where your viewfinder is <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to do this work half, half down the camera and half sort of like a little bit further away from me than I normally would do, so it's a little bit awkward. Just trying to give us some fresh solder. So when we do eventually join these components back together again, we've got a nice surface to solder everything back to rather than the uh, the burnt offerings that we had before so that's looking a little bit better now so I just need to strip the ends of of these wires uh, which we're going to try and do now I 
can sort of see where where the insulation on this wiring sort of burnt through, um, if you like. And it's all gone a little bit, if I'm honest, it's all gone a little bit manky. Um, so I'm just going to cut the end of that off. <laughs> This side's not too bad. This side's actually not too too badly damaged, so we might be able to salvage that. So what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm just going to go find my wire strippers and just strip the ends of these, um, and then I will join you back and we'll see if we can uh, join these two outputs back to the the pins and then get this resold and see what happens. So just bear with me, guys. Be back. Right. Okay. So we've um, just off camera. I managed to find my wire strippers. Um, I stripped those wires back uh, and just resoldered the uh, the connections onto the bottom there uh, and run the the wires up through the uh, the channels there uh, just to keep them nice and out of the way. So I'll give those a a tug test. And uh, those are those aren't going anywhere now. Those are those are nicely soldered into position there. They're nice and strong joints. Um, put a bit of flux on each just to aid the uh, thinning and wetting of the, the soldering and the and the uh, and the pin, uh, and those all look to be be on there quite nicely now. Um, so, you know, that's all looking pretty good to go. That now, um, so we shouldn't have any more problems with that. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to reattach that to our to our power supply uh, board. So, in order to do that, um, I'm just going to swap the uh, the end on my soldering iron here. Okay, to the bigger end because of course we've got some fairly big beefy meaty connections on the bottom of this power supply. So I'm just going to flip this back over. Oop. <laughs> My help if I uh, put it through the board the right way. Okay, so that's now sitting nice and flat there now, um, which is certainly more than it was doing before. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to pop a drop of solder onto one of the two front pins there, just to hold this in position while we uh, while we solder the rest of it up. So first things first, is to actually get a drop of uh, flux. And just pop a little bit on the uh, on the contact pad, and of course the uh, the pin from the transformer. And we're going to do that on all six of these pins. Okay, and then I'm just going to put my finger underneath it and just make sure that that is sat flush to the board and isn't going anywhere. And then I'm just going to get a drop of solder. Into that front pin there, and that that should suffice. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that this transformer is sat flat to the board still. And as you can see, there it is. It's nice and flat that now, nice and flush to the surface. That's not going to go anywhere now. So I'm just going to put uh, a little bit of fume extraction on, just to draw the nasties away from the flux residue. I'm just going to solder these other points.
Okay. Okay, so that's us done there now. Um, we have soldered those uh, contact pads. Um, so those pins back to the uh, back to the contact pads on the board there now. Um, so all that's left to do now, really, to be honest, is we'll just give this one more sort of visual check, just to make sure there's nothing else um, around the vicinity of that that's sort of be become collateral, if you like. Um, and then we'll give that a quick clean off with some alcohol, just to remove the the flux residue. As you can see, that's now nice and flat. Um, to the board there now that's not sat up or sat at a funny angle uh, our pins are still still connected in there now and uh, as you can see down the throat of that there now that's looking nice and neat as opposed to uh, the two pins flapping in the wind either side of that now so uh, we will just go and pop this back together and we'll give it a test and we'll see if that indeed cures our, um, cures our problem so um, We'll just pop this back together and we'll pop it back in the PlayStation and we'll plug it back in. So if you want to join me in a sec um, and we'll have this back together, we'll pop it in and we'll see if it works. Okay, so this is our uh, PlayStation power supply uh, and what I've done here is I have reassembled our power supply unit. Um, so this is all ready to go back in. So here's our PlayStation waiting our newly repaired unit. So this power supply here uh, is the one which we have just replaced the trans well replaced it repaired the transformer in so we're just going to pop the uh, the power ribbon back in down here and then of course fold that back over and that just clips in there so we're going to pop a few screws back in this now so of course you have the two long screws in the bottom corners here on the spring retainers there you go. Screw these in. And then we'll do a, a quick test on this and hopefully hopefully that's done the job. So like I say, when we uh, we had a look on the um, when we had a look at the uh, the power supply PCB itself, um, there didn't look to be a an awful lot wrong with it, it all looked clean, nothing looked burnt apart from that dodgy transformer and like I said to you um, when we were just sort of having a look to diagnose this fault the best thing you can do to be honest before you even think about breaking out your multimeter uh, and, and measuring things is actually to just use your eyes and see what you can spot and like I said the first thing that, that I spotted when I had a good look at the top side of the board was that wonky transformer um, it looked like it was sitting up away from the board and sure enough uh, it was, um, and all the connections had, uh, had basically broken off it on the uh, on the uh, on the output side. So we've repaired all those now, and everything else looked good. Uh, so hopefully now we're going to get a bit of life out of this uh, out of this old girl. So we're just going to put everything. I've just marked up our console that we've taken this thing out of so I don't lose track of which machine is which because I do have a few in bits at the moment. So those are all going to be uh, on upcoming videos so don't worry we've got plenty of new content coming your way over the next couple of weeks so be sure to, to stay tuned and you know like I say uh, Make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep abreast of the latest updates and videos as they come. I do actually owe you guys a, a big thank you. We have hit double figures on the subscriber front. I think we're up to 15 at the moment, so that's brilliant. And we're up at nearly a thousand channel views. So thank you to all you who have uh, commented, rated, liked, and subscribed to, to my videos so far. Um, it really does make me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile here. Um, and like I say, if you guys are enjoying them and getting something useful out of them as well, then that's that's what we're here for, and uh, and that's why I'm I'm doing this. So 
thank you very much for you guys who have done that and anybody who's thinking about it then please don't think for too long and please do it so that's our PlayStation there and we'll just move you back and uh, hopefully we'll get some joy here so I'm just going to plug in a HDMI and some power and we'll hit the big button that's looking a bit better and if we just go <laughs> light from outside can play merry hell with this camera so Close the curtains for you. And I'll just switch the input on my monitor because for some reason it. Even switching the monitor on would help, wouldn't it? So, <laughs> but as you can see there now. Uh, that's all up and running. Uh, got a nice white light there now, and our PlayStation is uh, back in the land of the living. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that and you've got something out of it. And uh, and I'll see you on the next video.